So this is the not pretty side of when we deal with a lot of animals. This is a pretty serious issue. I don't really know what brought this on. This is not common. I see this more in snakes and a lot of times people make bad mistakes with this and hopefully I'm not gonna make a bad mistake. I've had a, a pretty good working knowledge of this and I've been able to often fix it. So this is a tricky one, but I'm gonna show you kind of what I do. Hi everyone, uh, being a reptile keeper and a breeder, sometimes you actually have to address medical problems or problems with your animals. And today we're gonna go over a really bad one. And uh, yesterday I happened to notice, looking at a crocodile monitor, that she, it's a female, has a distended cloaca. So that utterly means her bits on her lower digestive part are uh, the muscle that holds everything in to her cloaca, her rectum, have um, relaxed enough where part of that is actually coming out of her, part of her you know, lower intestine. And uh, this can be very traumatic because once the insides come out, they can get uh, damaged from being out in the normal environment. They could get uh, filthy, get a uh, bacterial infection. They could actually literally suffer physical uh, harm and become damaged. So let's take a look at this and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is the not pretty side of when we deal with a lot of animals. This is a pretty serious issue. Uh, the, the good part of it, I caught it before there's a lot of damage. But this is really, it's not bloody. It, there's a lot of edema, so it's swollen, so it came out of her. And what it is, is basically, it's inside out. So, the first thing I want to do, because this is a really dangerous situation, um, I'm going to want to get her on a systemic antibiotic. So, uh, I've weighed her, and I'm going to give her a quick little shot. And what that's doing is, um, it's essentially, it's prophylactically dealing with any anticipated uh, bacterial infections. I do not at this time actually know what caused this problem. There's some kind of uh, stress possibly or uh, a whole bunch of different things that, that I don't really know what brought this on. This is not common. I see this more in snakes and a lot of times people make bad mistakes with this and hopefully I'm not going to make a bad mistake. I've had a, a pretty good working knowledge of this and I've been able to often fix it. So this is a tricky one, but I'm gonna show you kind of what I do. I'm gonna give her a shot. Now this is the intermuscular. So this is, can you get that? I got it. So what I do is I don't wanna cause her any, as much pain as possible. So I'm gonna go into her muscle. I'm using, that's it. I'm using an insulin syringe. So the gauge on this needle is really, really small. So different types of, um, ways to administer antibiotics or different medications. Sometimes it's superficial, it's just under the skin, that's called subcutaneous. Then we have intramuscular, where we're getting it into the muscle and then we're gonna get it into rapid absorption into the bloodstream, hopefully. Um, you inject the first part of the animal's body away from the kidneys because I'm using an aminoglide, I'm actually using genomycin in this case, and this is a pretty heavy hitter. Uh, it's treated every 72 hours. I don't like the way she's looking. She's uh, kind of crashing. The, the brightness to her eyes, she's not reacting a lot. You can definitely tell she has a lot of discomfort. Uh, and really what she needs is to be able to see if I can get her parts back inside her without causing her too much trauma. Because uh, really, we don't even have uh, a veterinarian 
that's accessible to us that even could even handle something like this because they would actually knock her out and uh, put her out with isofluorine gas. And when you start doing that with reptiles, it, it has all sorts of problems. So what are you doing right now, Kevin? Um, basically, I'm just disinfecting this a little bit. It's, it's not a wound, but boy, we're gonna end up turning her over and you're gonna have to, have to try to keep her quiet, but I'm just doing this because I, I really have to see what I'm up against here. Um, I don't enjoy this one bit at all, but I got some teramycin ointment to like, just antibacterial ointment that gives me a little bit of uh, really. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to try to cover her head, Jeremy, and I'm gonna need you to help me turn her over. Okay. Okay. We're gonna, yeah, perfect, here. Okay, so her wiggling certainly is not the best thing in life. And you know, we can only, I don't know exactly what the pain level is. Okay, so what's, what's this, this is done? It's, so it's backwards. So think of a sock being pushed back. So if I had a sock and I stretched it out and I put a pool ball in the end and then I twist it and then pull it back through itself, it's, it's basically inside out. So right here is the side. So if I can kinda, I know, if I can get that little bit in first. Let's see. Okay, there, so that's, that's the rectum, okay? So we need this other stuff back inside. So the muscle that cinches this, so I'm going to use my finger to hold it and I need to get, see this, this is all swollen up, but I need that, the rectum, I need like the final part. progress, believe it or not. If I did this with gloves, I mean, I clean my hands off, but if I do this with gloves, it, it, my dexterity will certainly suffer. So you're just looking at all the area around the side. You basically need this to go in and there's you know obviously there's been a fair bit of uh, swelling and trauma to this There's a lot of concentration. It's that one little side. See that? Mm -hmm. Keeps catching, so I'm going to switch over. Because that swab. Sweetie. 
Okay. We're getting there. I need that. If you just stuff it back in and you don't reverse it, you're going to potentially have problems when she tries to defecate. So that muscle right here is just really, really weak. So there's a muscle that holds this in. So just like around your belly button, you have a muscle, which is your umbilicus, and that muscle cinches around your belly button. And when you're born, it holds your inside, your, your body cavity, it holds everything below your diaphragm in and doesn't let it come out your belly button. Let's turn that around, let's take a peek. Okay, let's let it go for a second. It's, it's, it's traumatic. So what we're gonna do here now, it's not as simple as just stuffing it back in, folks, okay? I wish, I wish, I'm, I'm worried about her, that's good though, she, she responds right there. Uh, and we might have an underlying problem that I don't feel I don't feel any blockage, but you know I'm, I'm this is this is very uh, anecdotal and trivial when I'm doing something like this. Uh, she's not moving a lot. Uh, I don't know really what the pain. I can feel her, her ribs splayed out. Uh, so what we would do next is we uh, supportive management of her environment, which means proper temperatures, uh, proper uh, hydration, um, availability to just being kept super, super clean. And one thing I can do is I don't have any intent to feed her. So I don't want to add anything else into the GI tract, which is then essentially has to come out because it is basically a tube. And so right now she's got enough meat on her. Uh, you know, it's, this is, she's traumatized. She had this thing, I noticed it last night. And so she's been dealing with this. So I don't really know what led to this, but as far as distended cloacas go, some of the things that are associated with distended cloacas are parasite infections, an animal being dehydrated, an animal eating something, and then as it's digesting it, not getting the proper temperatures or uh, access to water. And what happens is whatever is being digested, it uh, basically doesn't have enough moisture to move through the GI tract and it actually um, becomes an obstruction. It, it basically, uh, the moisture wicks out by the body if the animal's dehydrated and it, it starts to adhere to the, the gut lining. And so if we had something down in the cloaca and it starts to adhere, to the cloaca and it's, it's pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to get rid of that organic material. And it's pushing so much, the muscle relaxes, the insides come out and, or if there's an obstruction. So like fecal material becomes uh, twisted, you know, certainly with horses, it's very classic, whatever. So this happens with snakes. Um, all sorts of different things. Sometimes you'd be doing everything right, indeed, She's been doing wonderful. I have other little croc monitors, they're all captive, and doing absolutely stellar in every different way. And this just happened, so I can't exactly uh, ID the exact problem. You're a tough guy. And crunch my nose. So, uh, some of the things that I don't like, I see people, they get snakes with distended cloacas and they're putting sugar all over it. And what the idea is, so you got the snake, it's kicked out, it's cloaca, and then they douse it with sugar, and then the sugar is is to wick up all the moisture that's in that exposed area, makes it small enough that you can push it back inside the animal. I don't like that. Do not attempt to put a cloaca back. Generally, do have a vet do this, okay? But if you were in a horrible case situation, if the cloaca has necrotic tissue, what's necrotic tissue? Tissue that's wrong. Yeah, so tissue that's dead. You must first debride it. So you must first go through soaks that might take days, and you want to rid it of any, uh, if it can, if it's superficial, you want to rid it of any of that necrotic tissue so you have live material. If I take that dead tissue and put it inside there, it's a great way for a bacterial infection. 
I'll give you the crib notes. <coughs> Bacterial infection. Yes, yeah. and that will ultimately kill the animal because if you perforate the bowel, anything like this, if you make any kind of hole from the bowel into the body cavity, uh, peritonitis, any kind of infection in the body cavity, all these different things are, are lethal to these animals. And um, so the sugar idea, I would much prefer when the cloaca comes out, uh, make sure you soak the animal, make sure you're, you know, you're addressing your, your husbandry. Animal needs to be well hydrated, so it might soak like that for a day. Constantly cleaning that water, you want to rid it of any material. There cannot be any material on that cloaca. There cannot be necrotic tissue on that cloaca. And then what I do is I use a little bit of, um, you can use betadine, proiodine, always diluted, uh, chlorhexidine, always once again diluted. Because even something like hydrogen peroxide, pure hydrogen peroxide does what? Kills bacteria? Damages tissue, burns oh. tissue. So, uh, you, 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 you got, I'm kidding. You didn't give me the cliff notes. It, it, uh, come on, you can do this. No. Well, so I, I didn't know you needed Smedley. If you needed Smedley, Smedley so, could have ID'd all of those things. So, uh, anyways, so there, you know, there are little basic techniques, and you just want to not introduce a lot of bacteria. You don't want to introduce material, and you don't want to introduce dead tissue. And the trick is to get it back inside the animal. Don't feed the animal. And what you do a lot of times is you tape the vent shut with like black electrical tape. So what you're doing is you're giving this animal a chance to uh, let that muscle heal. Um, I am really, really interested what's going to happen with this animal. This is, you know, this is heartbreaking. I am worried, uh, but I've done about as much as I can, which is supportive fluids. I've given it a, a pretty strong antibiotic that is a very broad spectrum. I've uh, put the cloaca back into the animal uh, as best I could. If you went to a vet, what they do right now is once they get it back in there, pretty much in a different way, they would get it back in there and then they'd stitch it. they put a stitch through there or whatever. Um, I think we can um, still succeed without the stitch. I've certainly done it plenty of times. Uh, I'm not even going to tape her shut. I'm really worried about just her general uh, uh, disposition as far as like, is she crashing? I'm going to watch to see if her eyes start sinking into her head. She's being very, very quiet right now. Like once again, I don't know what the underlying problem is. I don't understand what caused this problem. But in some cases, I think nothing could happen and it just happens. This is one of these things. In these animals, it probably happens in the wild and ultimately the animal dies. So this is going to be an interesting one. Um, I, I've just been doing this for so long. I've learned all sorts of things. I've learned how to manage these things. Hopefully we get to do a follow-up on this video because I too am worried and this is a definitely a life-threatening uh, problem. So don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Knowing the Reptile, of course, Instagram, Knowing the Reptile, Evil Morph God, mine on Instagram, and certainly on Facebook, Knowing the Reptile Distributors. We appreciate all your comments. We appreciate you following us. And of course, if you're not on twitch.tv, on part of our channel, I don't know what you're doing. So, hope you enjoyed this really weird video. Say goodbye, guys. <laughs>